Unless you've been hiding in a bunker in anticipation of an upcoming nuclear war, chances are you've heard about or have even played the PlayStation 4 exclusive Horizon Zero Dawn. In an era where the role of first party console exclusives are not nearly as strong as they once were in the PS2 and PS3 era, Horizon has entered the market as a surprising addition to Sony's staple of system sellers. What's even more surprising is the fact that Horizon Zero Dawn is a sprawling and massive open world game made by a studio that effectively has zero experience in open world games. Horizon Zero Dawn was developed by Dutch studio Guerrilla Games. If you're a PlayStation veteran, you've probably recognized this name from the Killzone series of first person shooters. Before their first Killzone game for the PS2, Guerrilla actually made another game, which was also their first title. That game was Shellshock Nam 67, a third person shooter that got mixed reviews from critics. Shellshock wasn't a bad game on a technical level, but in terms of the setting and presentation, people just weren't too impressed with it. In the time you have given me, I have rebuilt our nation. I have rebuilt our strength. And I have rebuilt our pride! However, Guerrilla's first big breakout game was in the form of the original Killzone for the PS2. Killzone 1 brought a level of graphical polish and world building that had been lacking on the console until then. But where Halo was a big, bright, and pumping game, Killzone turned the grim, dark sci fi to 11 giving us a story of Space World War II replete with space Nazis and space allies to fight them. The original Killzone was a game that many people slept on, which is a pity because if you played it at the time, the graphics alone were just mind-blowing. Killzone 1 felt like it was a whole generation ahead of other FPS games on the PS2. Guerrilla Games really showed their ability to tap every last hardware feature the Emotion engine provided, which pretty much made them the perfect first-party developer. So it's no wonder Sony bought them outright. Now, whether you think that the Killzone games are good shooters or not, few people can argue the reputation Guerrilla has built over the years for technical expertise. They have been the perfect launch title developers, showcasing the best of what various PlayStation consoles could do right off of the bat. Killzone Mercenaries was a Vita game that I actually owned that was one of the titles that came closest to fulfilling Sony's original promise of a PS3 in your pocket. It is still, in my opinion, the best mainstream shooter on that or any other handheld console. So apart from Shellshock and Horizon itself, every game that Guerrilla has done has been a Killzone game. And all but one of the Killzone games have been in that. Yes, Shellshock was a third person shooter, which is mechanically not that far removed from an FPS. Interesting enough, their PSP title Killzone Liberation was not an FPS, but an isometric real time shooter. It made perfect sense since the PSP lacked a second analog stick, most first person shooters were just too tedious to control on the system. So Guerrilla made the right choice and switched genres to fit the handheld better. Liberation also showed me that Guerrilla was willing to make choices that served gameplay, even if those choices took them out of their comfort zone. Which is good, because when Guerrilla was taking internal pitches for their next game from employees, there was no way that the winning idea would ever work as an FPS. Or who knows, maybe I could be wrong. But the decision to realize the post-apocalyptic, robotic, dinosaur-filled world of Alloy as an open-world game was obviously the right one. But taking on the challenge of developing an open-world game is an immense gamble for a studio that doesn't have a history in the genre. If you look at the best open world franchises of today, they're almost exclusively made by people who have had many tries at getting the formula right. We're on the third Witcher game, which while I love the first Witcher, you have to admit that the game was pretty rough around the edges. Bethesda has made multiple open world games over multiple decades, and they still can't get it quite right from a technical standpoint. We have four numbered Far Cries, five 3D GTAs, you get the idea. Massive open world game development is not a club you can just simply walk into. So how could Guerrilla Games go from making scripted FPS tunnel shooters to one of the most beautiful and technically impressive open world games on any platform? Well, I've done a lot of research and I've gathered some thoughts on this. The first major factor was their willingness to get the right people. Based on the interviews that I've seen with various people from the studio, there were about 250 people in Holland working on the game, and then there was an additional 150 employees from territories in Asia. 
in terms of the total number of people who contributed to any degree, I've heard that over a thousand people are credited with working on the game in total. So the first thing that Guerrilla Games did right was not underestimate the resources that they would need to get the game right, and this clearly paid off. Number two. It's hard to convey just how technically proficient Guerrilla Games has been over the years. As I mentioned before, their games on the various PlayStations have demonstrated an aggressive approach to optimization and making every circuit surrender its performance. However, one thing that I think shows better than anything is the Decima engine. The ability to create your own cutting edge game engine is a huge technical mic drop. Then to just resell that engine to other studios is a sign of greatness. Guerrilla Games created the Decima engine for the PS4, and we've already seen it used to great effect on Shadowfall and Until Dawn. It will also be the engine that drives Kojima's upcoming game, Death Stranding. Whatever you may think of it as a game, Killzone Shadowfall was a gorgeous game on a technical level, but I never could have thought that this same engine could make a huge open world game like Zero Dawn due to the scale of creating an open world game with the level of technical prowess. But while I say this, I don't think it's just the engine either. Until Dawn was also a very pretty game, but Supermassive was not able to get the great performance in comparison to what Guerrilla can tap from their own engine. When you look at the behind the scenes technical details during the development of Horizon, there are just so many incredibly clever ideas that all add up to something that I'd have a hard time believing runs on a PS4. And yet, there are still well and good moments that do remind me of the limitations of the PS4, even with Guerrilla Games. But for an example of one of these clever ideas, uh, the engine loads and unloads assets on the fly, just a few degrees wide than the actual viewpoint of the game's camera. If the camera isn't looking at it, then it's not being rendered or taking up memory. This means the game can pack the visible part of the world with more detail, with the user being none the wiser. The distance level of detail scaling in Horizon is also aggressively tuned. For example, at the precise distance where the player would be physically incapable of telling the difference between a 3D tree or a 2D sprite, Gorilla uses sprites. From the player's point of view, the illusion is out of sight. For people with a level of sheer technical kung fu, the technological challenges of making an open world game is a manageable one. Thanks to the army of people they brought in to work on this game, the attention to detail in Horizon is mind-blowing. And I'm not talking just about graphical fidelity, but the amount of thought that went into everything this new world is made of. If you look at the production notes for a tribe like the Nora, they've thought about everything. What does the architecture look like? What level of technology do they have? Is the clothing practical? If we move to the Karja, Orsram, or the Banuk, each one of them is distinct and different. There is no rhyme without reason in this game. Interestingly, Guerrilla actually brought in the same German design company that helped create the look for the wildlings in the TV show Game of Thrones. Not because their own artists couldn't draw or design, but because these guys were also experts in anthropology, making the Nora a tribe that could really exist and look the way that they do. The obsessive level of detail is consistent throughout the game. This is also a game that makes an incredibly extensive use of motion capture, and the overall level of animation detail is jaw-dropping. This is one of the only games where I haven't yet spotted those little transitional animation cheats where my character will snap from one type of animation to another. And while the game may be locked at 30 frames per second, at least each one of those frames is actually filled with actual unique animation. But truly, the biggest reason I think Guerrilla was able to pull off such an extreme change in genre and direction off successfully is simply because they didn't try to reinvent the wheel. They have had decades worth of open world games to borrow from, and Horizon Zero Dawn really plays like a best of album of all those great open world titles that have come before it. The creativity and uniqueness of the game comes from its visual style and setting, but mechanically it's all been done before. Assassin's Creed, Tomb Raider, Far Cry, and many more games have their DNA liberally splattered all over Horizon Zero Dawn. This is an approach that I've brought up recently straight out of the playbook of Naughty Dog, another Sony-owned first-party developer. Their Uncharted series and The Last of Us are also games which don't do anything fundamentally new. 
they just do a better job polishing the presentation of their games than the people who pioneered the playbook. It's the strategy of polish and cohesion, taking the Model T as inspiration and making a hypercar. They both have four wheels and mechanically do the same things, but the hypercar is the diamond next to the lump of coal. It's in a way almost the exact opposite of what happened with Mafia 3, where the concept and riding were something really special, but the actual mechanics were so rough that you had to grind to find those special moments in the narrative. Zero Dawn, like The Last of Us, is tuned and polished with a level of obsession that makes you question the sanity of the people behind it. Now, despite my own personal feelings towards losing interest in the game due to how derivative it can be at times, I can still acknowledge why many may be enamored by the actual minute-to-minute -minute experience of playing Horizon. The game is like a gourmet cheeseburger. It's the taste you love, but it's made to a standard that you didn't think a hamburger could be made. It's not just ground beef, it's Kobe beef. It's not just cheese, it's $450 a pound white Stilton gold. But I think that it's important for all of us when we're looking back at the games that we play to learn to understand the differences between games that truly innovate gameplay mechanics and design and those who simply polish them to look nice. Sometimes that difference can walk a very fine line. Regardless, Horizon Zero Dawn represents a turning point for Guerrilla Games, I think. They've pulled off something that I would have dismissed as impossible for the studio when Shadowfall first launched. They have reinvented themselves from a company that makes shooters to not a company that just makes open world games, but to a company that can apparently do whatever they set their minds to. Only time will tell if this is just a one-hit wonder from Guerrilla, but nothing I've seen of what went on behind the curtains suggests it will be just that. But more importantly, Horizon Zero Dawn makes most other AAA games' presentation look very sloppy in comparison, and hopefully it will be a title that will raise the technical bar across the board as we enter this new era of the PS4 Pro and Xbox Scorpio hardware. Hey everyone, I just wanted to take a moment just to say thank you so much for watching my video. It's really good to be back and hopefully I'll be able to get back on my schedule of being able to upload one video like this every week. Special shout out to my Patreon backers who have backed me so far. And if you're interested in backing me on Patreon or if you actually want to read my script for this video, you can check out my blog and my Patreon link in the description box below. Thanks again for watching.